Delicious looking, isn't it? I'll show you how to make this. Well, hello and welcome back to Texas Cooking today. I'm gonna to be making tilapia today. Got some wonderful ingredients here. This is a fantastic recipe. It is so simple. And once you see how simple it is, you'll be like, oh, I've gotta try that. It's too easy. And once you've tried it, you're gonna be hooked. This is a really, really delicious, although very simple recipe. And we're gonna be putting a very special sauce with it too. This sauce is gonna be a chipotle aioli. Now normally aioli is just mayonnaise with garlic, okay? That's what an aioli is. And normally it's made by infusing the oil that you make the mayonnaise with, with garlic prior to making the mayonnaise. And it makes a really good product. However, today we're gonna to do the shortcut method. We're gonna reach into the spice cabinet. We're gonna do it that way. And it is not hard, folks. This is a very, very simple, easy recipe. It's gonna be fun for you to make. And once you try it, I think you're gonna be making it more than once. Let me show you the ingredients and uh, then we're gonna get busy cooking this. It doesn't take long. This baked tilapia dish is so very simple. It uses mayonnaise and breadcrumbs, okay? And these are a panko breadcrumb. Remember that word, panko. It's a special bread that's made in Japan that stays crispy. So you fry it, you can set it aside for a while. It's still crispy after 30 minutes, okay? It's still crispy after a day. You'll be surprised it really holds up. Part of the flavor and the acid release is all in this right here. It's that mayonnaise. We're gonna be using mayonnaise over the top of this along with our panko and it really brings out flavors like you cannot imagine. The mayonnaise really cooks off, but, and it leaves behind the breadcrumb, but it leaves also this flavor in the fish and an acidity that's absolutely fantastic. We're gonna be putting with this an aioli, which will work perfectly with it since it was cooked with mayonnaise. So mayonnaise is what you make an aioli with, okay? You combine mayonnaise with garlic. In fact, you actually make the mayonnaise with garlic and suddenly you have what's called an aioli. Well, in this case, we're going to be using powdered garlic and we're going to use some chipotle sauce and a little pinch of salt to make our own very simple at home aioli. Folks, very delicious. Let's get busy cooking. All right, I'm going to make our aioli. So I want to start with a little bit of salt, just a little bit right on there a quarter of a teaspoon at the very most. Now, these chipotle sauces, there's a few different ones that are around. All I can say is if you already have a favorite, use that. And if not, the one I'm using, I absolutely love. Now, they did not sponsor me. Oh God, I wish they would, but they have not sponsored me. So I have to say, hey, they didn't sponsor me, guess what? And that's just that. So the thing of it is, is um, while not being sponsored, I do recommend the flavor of this. And that's one of the few times you're ever gonna hear me mention anything about a brand name. All right, now, our garlic powder, put that over the top. And all we need to do is just simply get it all mixed. And notice I'm just using a fork. Don't make this any too difficult, folks. Isn't that easy? And it makes this beautiful, very simple sauce that is absolutely fantastic with a piece of uh, tilapia. And you're gonna really like the way this works with the fish. So there is our sauce. Nothing more to it than that. Now our tilapia, I'm ready to get this prepared, but the very first thing I need to do is to turn on my oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that bake set my temperature. I'm sorry you can't see this, but I'm setting this at 425, getting it preheating. We want to take our mayonnaise and do a very simple coating of mayonnaise on the outside of the fish. Isn't this too easy? Now, if you'll notice how I'm taking mayonnaise out of a bowl, folks, do not put mayonnaise onto fish with something like this and then turn around and dip the item that you spread the mayonnaise with back into a mayonnaise jar. 
don't do that. Um, <laughs> that's, that's just inappropriate. You're going to cross contaminate your mayonnaise with fish juices and that could cause you some serious problems down the road. So simply don't do that, okay? Now, yeah, here we go. So as you see, I'm putting a liberal coating on this, probably a little bit more than you normally use for a sandwich. And I have found that it's easier to coat the side that's facing away from you. I don't know, it's just the way our hands work and the angle of the, the spatula. And if you think there's, there's a little too much, hey, you just remove a bit. It's not gonna hurt a thing, okay? There we go, like right there, it was a bit thick. You don't have to be any too neat. If you get a little of this on the paper, it's not gonna hurt a thing because it's, as it sits in the oven, it's gonna heat up and turn to liquid and kind of a lot of it's gonna flow off of the fish. Some of it's gonna flow down through the fish and flavor it and uh, soften it, tenderize it a little bit and that's gonna produce this most heavenly, heavenly flavor. Um, doing your tilapia this way, you'll be surprised. It's, when not, people have tried this for the first time that I've prepared it for them, they look at me a little bit funny when they see how I'm making it. And then when I see their face as they taste it for the first time, it's always a joy for me because of that expression that I get. It's an expression of joy and surprise and it makes people happy when things come out so delicious. So here I am taking that panko breadcrumb as you see, I'm just gonna spread it across those fish. And I started with about a half a cup of panko breadcrumbs here. Uh, I'm doing um, three fillets with that. And of course, you know, those measurements that you're gonna see on uh, the ingredients quantities se segment, which is coming up soon. Um, those measurements are rough when it comes to how much of the breadcrumbs. So you can go light on it, you can go heavy on it, but I recommend enough to completely obscure all of the mayonnaise, or the vast majority of it at least. Simple, easy, absolutely delicious and folks definitely something you should give a try all right our fish is prepared the aioli is prepared all we got to do is bake this up plate it up and we're ready to enjoy our lunch our oven is preheated at 425 degrees let's go ahead and get that in there to bake Check that in 12 minutes, it should be ready at that point. The quantity of everything that we use today to each filet that you have, you're gonna be using two to three tablespoons of mayonnaise. Just cover it liberally and evenly on every filet. Then top it with your breadcrumbs. So you're gonna be using in the neighborhood of about a quarter of a cup of breadcrumbs per filet. Just enough breadcrumbs to make sure that each filet is completely covered and that you can't see the mayonnaise through it, okay? Our aioli, very simple, half a cup of mayonnaise to a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and two to three tablespoons of chipotle sauce. Mix that all together well and you've got the best aioli that you've ever tasted. Folks, let's take a look at what this looks like once it's all baked up and plated up. I've just got the fish out of the oven, looking absolutely beautiful. And with it, we have a wonderful rice pilaf. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my plate prepped up. There we are. Get them right there. And now we need a little bit of sauce to go with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push him over just a little bit. 
I'll run it down this side right over here. That's all there is to it, folks. Very, very simple fish dish and delicious at that. The tilapia came out beautiful. See that? And when you get a chance, and you put it through a little of that aioli. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Delicate. Buttery soft. A light, slight, slight bit of acidity there that just brings out the flavor of that fish so well. And then that crunch, that wonderful panko crunch. Put it with something nice like a little of rice and folks, you've got a wonderful dish right there. So simple, so easy, and definitely worth the time it takes to make it. So please give this a try. When you're done with that, take a look in the description box below. And if you would take a look at my website, that's satrotter.com. That's where I sell my recipes at and that's where you're gonna find those uh, in the printable form. The rest of my videos, there's a lot of them, lots of recipes there on Texas Cooking Today. Please take a look in the comment section. If you would leave a question, if you would leave a request, or if you just wanna have something to say, go ahead and type it out. It's appreciated and it's definitely read. Thank you very much for watching. Please stick around for just a moment. I'm gonna tell you about my written recipes and how I do them. It's really cool. And please enjoy your fish. Y'all have a nice day, bye-bye. Mm, yeah. I wanted to mention to you my recipes. Yes, I sell my recipes. Okay, look, some people, they give the recipes out for free and they charge for the tutorial. So I do it the opposite on YouTube. You get the tutorial for free, I charge for the recipe. I did a lot of work, a lot of writing, a lot of extra stuff that goes with this, okay? Come over a little closer. Let me show you one of these up close so you really realize what you're getting. And then also, I'm offering one for free. We'll take a quick look at that right now. Come here. This is what I'm talking about right here. When I fill out a recipe, when I write one, I always bullet point all of the uh, ingredients, okay? A simple one or a complex one. I, in addition, number the instructions and often I'll give pictures with it. Now, not all of them are this well done, but this is what I'm going for on every single one from here on out. All of my new recipes you're gonna see done this way. And on the end of the recipe, there's always a place for notes for yourself, okay? Right now, go to my website, you're gonna get this one right here for free, okay? Cinnamon rolls. Enjoy that cinnamon rolls recipe and take a look at the others I have. They're really worth your time.